In this video, we're going to talk about battery balancing it, what it is and why do we get overload errors. A lot of people install these batteries when they add it to the pack, no matter which way they wire them, if they wire them correctly or incorrectly, um, they get overload errors on the inverter. Now, this is caused by a number of faults. Um, it could be a wiring, it could be your plus and minuses not connected together properly. So make sure they're firmly plugged in. You can hear a click when you put them in, them leads and um, the power leads. And obviously to remove them, you basically there's a little button on the side where you press your bu press the button with your fingernail, then it just pulls off. They are designed to be locked on um, because of safety. Um, so you need to obviously you know not stress them, not just pull them. You need to press the button on the side um, to make sure they come out. And when they go back in, they actually click. Make sure all your network connections are okay. So you zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. Zero to one. If you watch my earlier videos, you'll see that's the way you um, network all the batteries up, even when you're adding a new one to it. So your last master battery, which is going to be this one here, is always, you always leave um, link port zero free. So that tells the inverter that the actual um, last battery, which this is where we're pointing to now, is a master battery. Now this particular master battery has something called a BMS built into it. Some pilot batteries will not have the BMS built have a separate BMS whereas these ones have it built in on each battery and um, so when you actually connect them all together and um, obviously make sure your inverter switched off by your RCD and uh, make, make sure your DCI circuit switch is switched off or if you don't have one of those make sure all your batteries are switched off um, and then you can basically and um, once you know all your connections are secure and, and all, everything's correct you can basically switch them all on. Now, the way you obviously switch them all on, you switch. You can switch them all on from the switch there. You can switch there. Each switch, each battery's got a switch. You can switch them all on from there. And on your last battery, which is your master battery, you press that SW button for three seconds. You hold it for three seconds and release it. And that, what that does is net basically tell the actual um, battery BMS system to check the network connections of each battery. So once you do that, what you'll see, if you watch my other videos, is um, all the lights will light up on each battery in turn. So the first five will light up on there, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, sixth one, seven, they'll all flash all together in the end. That means you've got a successful BMS in between the batteries. So batteries are all talking to each other, they're working all fine. And then the next step is to turn on your inverter. Now, a lot of people will get some kind of ID34 error, which is an overload error. Um, you get them on, no matter how you connect the batteries in terms of ACAN or RS485. The reason you get these errors is basically you don't leave it long enough for the batteries themselves to synchronize to each other. So once you switch all your batteries on, you press your SW button at the bottom, they've all flashed together in each, each, each one on each turn, they've all, they've all blinked etc they've all got the run light on on each battery and um, then you know you have to basically wait about a minute you can't switch inverter on straight away a lot of people will switch the inverter on straight away which is a big mistake because the batteries have to balance now these batteries balance automatically so when you add them to each other the BMS decides which one's going to have more charge than the second one or the third one so this is what battery balancing is and um, so you have to wait about a minute or even two minutes depends on your inverter model just to make sure that all the batteries are balanced with each other you don't need to do anything to balance them per se you don't have to press any button they do it automatically but you do have to wait about a minute then then the bms registered the seven batteries in total there's so many kilowatts available it records each state of each battery so the inverter knows how to charge each battery how much to charge it and when to stop charging it. This is all to do with battery balancing. Once you do that, from your RCD, you can actually switch on your inverter and your inverter should pick up the batteries. Um, and if you look in system information, it should tell you your kilowatts capacity and that should be increased once you added a new battery. Sometimes you, you ain't gonna get the exact number. So I'll give you an example. You may have 3.5 kilowatts on each one of these batteries. Um, but the actual inverter will say 518 total capacity of the amp hours. 
that's just the way it measures it. Each one of these batteries is 75 amp hours. So you've got seven batteries, seven times 75. You should have 525, but invertible you might report 518. That doesn't mean there's a problem. It doesn't mean there's an error. It's just, just the way it interprets the voltages. But you're still going to get your full capacity out of your batteries, uh, depending on what depth of discharge you've got set. Some people have these set to 95%, but this depends all, all on your inverter. Most of the time people have these at 80%, which is fine. And then obviously the common thing now is 90%, but you can all set all this up in your individual inverter. This has nothing to do with the batteries themselves. It's the actual inverter settings. So this is your own thing. And on my next video, I'll be doing um, how to set up the DOD, death of discharge um, for each set of batteries. Um, Obviously, it's, we're getting more technical now as we go through the videos, so you do need to have experience. Excuse the wiring on these batteries, because obviously what we do is interchange them, so there's nothing securing wire, wires to walls and things like that, because um, I have to just unplug them all the time. Um, so, you know, it, it does look a bit messy, it can be better, um, but obviously I don't want obviously people coming and saying it's messy, etc, etc, because this isn't the point of the video. These videos are tutorials, learning videos, not aesthetically um, testing videos where you look at each one and say, oh, that wire is not straight, etc. As long as the wires are not binding into each other, as long as they're not nipped in between the batteries, as long as they're all free and they're all working perfect, like, like you can see they are, they're perfectly fine. So um, thanks for watching my video. Um, remember to subscribe, it's very important. Like the videos as well. And um, yeah, I'll be keeping making any, making any more videos as well. I'll keep making more. Bye for now.